Why, hello! I'm back with a second video in one week. It's, well, I do spoil ya. I'm Jono, and basically, I thought, as I'm sitting in the lab today, it's Easter day, so happy Easter, everyone. Um, it would be a nice opportunity to make a new video on something that we've been upgraded in the Jono, not Bono, Cubase touch controller. And specifically, the harp or the Gliss machine. Basically, before I do, thank you to Clausen Lopez. Your coding on this is genius. And yeah, <laughs> I think we may have finished it. I don't know. There's got to be something else we can add. It's something to annoy you. But um, yeah, right. Let's have a little look at this. We're going to go into Cubase. And um, well, the touch screen is showing, which is good. Basically, we have the Q basement showing, which is what I nicknamed the lower area of the controller. And um, God, I'm excited about this. I don't know what to say, really. Um, we're going to hit the and breathe button. I'll try and remember to use the mouse um, for some of it. But if we go along here, we can actually see the new fandangled harp. OK, so I'm going to go for all the features that it has. I'm going to show you two new features before I play it. And then that will really let the cat out of the bag of what's been going on. So um, this is standard view up here. And if we press this button here, we can now go full width, which is fantastic for playing. Um, the button below that is full screen. So now we can actually have the dynamic range. You know, it's huge compared to physical playing. Again, that depends on the library and stuff like that. But let's actually get out of here. So now I, I can't, I have to show this before I show any of the features. OK, in Cubase, I've got a basic harp loaded. Now check out the strings. <laughs> they vibrate, they animate. <laughs> Let's make this big. I'll use the mouse so you can see where I'm pressing. Oof. That library clips at that at that um dynamic. Let's change the library. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a joy. Full screen harp is a joy. And let's have a little play around, shall we? Like, so, um, OK, that this is a harp. Now, one of the new features that we've actually got is a range tapper. And that's at the very top. So let's just say this is useful for many reasons, like if you want to avoid key switching. So if I, I use the mouse, I was about to, it's so hard to just use, like just forget the mouse, you know. If I tap here, instantly the range down here goes to C0. And if I say, let's go to C5, this would be where you know your libraries and check the ranges. And let's say that there's, that, that range now is C0 to C5. So obviously down here, we've actually got instant ranges C0 to G5 and C0 to G6. Could add more if there are others needed, but let's say that there's one note after there that we need. We can tap there and then it actually increases the range. Um, yeah, I mean, like it, it makes sense to actually have it so accessible, like in the keyboard, we're going to add this as well. So. Right. When that loads there, the way that this works at the minute is that we have a menu system and stuff, but it's a bit clunky. So because the keyboards don't need to actually have, be that big, we can have another row of buttons at the top to um, essentially have the range tapper. But yeah, it's as easy as just setting the range visually. I thought that was a nice touch. 
But um, OK, so the functions that we've actually got in this, first of all, we can change the root note. Like, I want to say key, but it's not really, you know, it's actually the, the root that you, you choose. Um, because it's only in a key when you then choose the scales, right? So we've got a key. Let's change this to A, and then let's change this to, I don't know, whatever, harmonic major. I'm going to change the range as well to C0, C5. Yeah, see, that's even too much. Full screen, shall we? Let's change the scale to Mixolydian mode, I should say. Let's change Aeolian, natural minor. And I, I love the dynamic range now of being able to, you know, it have so much physical real real estate. Because some libraries are useless down at the you know lower velocities and stuff. Let's change that to Ragatodi. Let's change the key to E. F. G. And let's change that to Oriental. Pentatonic. <laughs> right, okay, so next to that we actually have a free mode. And you tap that and basically all of the pedals then are active and then you can manually change whatever you want. So, you know, you can make some exotic stuff, customized stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. They look like rubber bands when you vibrate them too much. And it's important to remember this, that if you don't take it out of free mode, then uh, you can't actually use the change the key and stuff because it, <laughs> it would have a meltdown and nothing would work. So you've got to manually turn that off and then these become null and void, and then they change. If you look at that, and I change the scale, Locrian, then it's changed. So yeah, you don't just have to use it on harp though. Um, you know, violins. Let's change the range, shall we? I mean, like some samples, it's not just, it's not gonna be great for some samples, but. Symphy. Okay, ensembles. We change that to that, maybe. Pits. Use it for sound design, obviously. Okay, so what about mallets? Because this actually does really work well with mallets. I don't want to go too loud, it'll clip. <laughs> I love the fact they, they move. About a xylophone. Oh, it's multi-touch as well, obviously. This is so responsive compared to what it was. Like you could, if you put a delay on that and massive reverb.
Okay, so that's ten fingers. Um, eight fingers, two thumbs. I, mean, I am from the Isle of Wight. <laughs> so let's, I don't know, whatever, change that to um, Persian. Is of this door. Yeah, I think you get the idea. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can literally just lose days and days playing around with all this kind of stuff. But, you know, a bit of context, I think, goes a long way. So, you know, here's Cubase. And basically, um, here's a piece of, uh, here's a song that I was writing a while ago that I've just sort of, res just about to actually resurrect and rewrite. Um, okay, so using this to gliss piano is useful. So. I turn that up uh, and I guess if I mute that because that's got to go anyway so, <laughs> right okay so the first thing I haven't even done is choose the actual key that is in um, E, so that's why it, you know just didn't work at all so E and then I'm just going to keep that on major just for now I mean we can do whatever um just nonsense isn't it but you know you can instantly you can just the realism compared to actually trying to do that with your fingers and then drawing it in because that's what a lot of people do they just go and then they change all the notes to be in the scales that whatever they want but <laughs> why bother Right, I think that that is long enough for a video on the harp and hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, if you want to see any more videos and stuff then I'll be making some more soon and um, yeah, hit like and subscribe or don't bother. <laughs> right, till next time.